Welcome to Earth 2 Comic Cast, where superheroes exist, have always existed, and superhero TV shows are the norm. Again, um, it's your boy Mo Crosby. This interview package I'm getting ready to show you guys is from Amazon's The Tick. This is this was really really fun to do, and the guys, uh, the the cast and Ben was really really fun to talk to. So I want you guys to be excited for this one because this one is really exciting for us to uh, to talk about. Um, so sit back, relax, and as always. Welcome to the planet. Yeah, the tip, guys. It was a pretty, pretty, pretty fun interview, a uh, pretty fun roundtable to do. Um, we got to talk to uh, most of the cast members. We couldn't get to talk to all of them because um, of time constraints. And But it was still fun, you know, the cast members we got to talk to. So um, without further ado, I'm going to get you guys into the uh, interviews. And here we go with Yara Martinez and Michael Cervezes. And these guys play Lint and Ramses. Here we go. So you created it all, going back to the comics, to the cartoon, to the other uh, live action films, uh, or live action series. What was it like, well, for you, again, creating a new one for you, uh, and doing all of <coughs> um, It was an interesting journey because when I did the pilot, I. Miss Lynn isn't what she is now, like fully realized in the, in the series. She just had three lines. And um, I spoke with Ben and Wally, and they were like, Oh, would you be cool, you know, with a contact lens? And, like, you know, like she, she, she has a glass eye. And, but that's like the extent of what I got, what, what I got about her. And then with wardrobe and hair, like the three braids was kind of an accident because my hair is so thick, it couldn't fit into one braid. So all these things just kind of started falling into place. And, um, Ben didn't have an answer for me in the pilot as to why she had a, a glass eye or they'd just be like, okay, so why does she have this? Why is she why is she like that? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then it wasn't until I saw him after at some party and he came up to me and he's like, oh my god. So she's electric and she shocks people like you know, and her she shoots glass eyes and blah blah blah. And I was like, oh me. Yeah, I was like, I hope I get to play this. You know, so that that's kind of how she came to me. Well, it was funny, my first day of work was the limousine scene that we have together. And so I, and I had seen the pilot, so I'd seen you in it, and so I thought, oh, you clearly have all the answers. Yeah. I'm like the new kid here, and you know, you have this fully realized character, and this whole backstory, and I'm just trying to find my way. And, it's comforting to know that you yeah. were <laughs> I feel like we were, especially like in that first, second episode, the first one that we shot together, the first one in the series, I felt like we were like really heavily relying on the directing. Yeah. <laughs> like just like, yeah. it's like after I did anything, I was like, was that okay? Yeah. Like Ben, was that? Like, how do you feel about that? You and know? it was clear that they were really trying to find the tone and find, you know, that knife edge between satire and serious and, you know, <laughs> menacing in the comic and we did I remember doing a lot of takes of that Playing scene around. because you know nobody everybody felt like they would know it when they saw it but nobody was quite sure what it was until we got there. And it was you know it was really a luxury to have Ben there on set every day. Like he is so specific. He knows he knows what he wants until we get it. That really I feel like it allows us to play because we know that they'll cut whatever makes yeah. us look really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Fun, fun, fun stuff. I mean, we got Michael first, and he talked about certain things, and then we finally got um, uh, Yara to come in, and she was really fun, and everything you know we did with them was really fun and really interesting. We got to really go into uh, some of the characters, some of the, um, uh, some of the things they talked about. We got to really go in there, and so I just wanted to... You know, let you guys know how we felt about that and let you guys know what their interview felt like. Um, the next uh, person up that we have for you, that I have for you, is Ben Edlin, and that's the show's creator. So um, you can imagine the kind of pressures it is to create, uh, create a show that has come from a property, even though it's a, a wacky show, but it's come from a property that people know and love. And so this is what Ben had to say about a, a couple of the questions we had to ask. We had to ask him. Well, I mean, uh, I think. Part of what was problematic in the previous live action, we sort of, it's been referred to as a little before its time in terms of what it was trying to have fun with and how many people were there to sort of resonate with that. It's very clear now what we thought of as what would ever be a superhero cap or something, like how many superhero shows can you have in one culture, uh, we, have, we have knocked that way out of any you know, possible park. <laughs> 
we're all kind of swimming in that. So it really felt like it was really a good time to kind of like look at those things and thought that like, you know at this point people would get on board. I think uh, it, uh, it feels that way. It feels like people are embracing it. So it seems like it's just the amount of superheroes out there called the ticket to be. Do you think the uniqueness of property kind of lends itself to where y'all don't have any like heavy expectations compared to say like in DC or Marvel property? Yes, I think we we have a great advantage because you know those things. First of all, those are giant houses trying to cover a bunch of different characters to different shows, and there's a lot of uh, that. In order to protect that reality, they they are sort of strung out, having to like they are just tied in here. We get to be a lot more fun because we're just kind of riffing off the top of it, building our own reality and being kind of very uh, concerned about its own continuity. But like, I think people are. My favorite thing is people come to this, I think, and they see the tick and they see how dumb we are, yeah. which we are. <laughs> We're dumb, uh, but then they don't expect necessarily that under that there's this like real uh, we care about the continuity of it. Like I always like that. That's why I like comic books. They really care about the continuity. So do we. And it, it, I think it's a, we're in a really interesting rare position. Not too many. There's not a lot of startup universes like that. That I mean, have a 30-year-old character. It gives it a little bit of like, oh, I guess I'll maybe pay attention to that reality because it's been around long enough. Yeah. We, we have updated it with uh, new characters, but also some classic ones. Why don't we see more classic ones like all the Samurai and Andy and Cow, things like I'd that? I'd like to, yeah. I think that there's room for it. I think, uh, you know, there's some really good uh, nutty characters in the, in the comic book that I'd like to see translated. You know, I think no needing cow could be great. <laughs> I think that the world gets crazy enough actually, it gets increasingly crazy as you go through the series or the season. And that's the intent is that like, it'd be nice if none of the um, ideas that were in the comic book or in the cartoon were too nuts to be alien to this universe. That would be quite a uh, quite a accomplishment because we're really trying to ground the human side of it and make the relationships matter. So we're really kind of hunting a weird tone. I'd like to have some of those guys come back. Paul's fun. It's great. Let's see if we can bake his sword into bread <laughs> and have him fight with a baguette. Yes. If that's if that's which side of tone that's yeah. in. So, to find out. how much how much pressure do you feel like this is again this is like you said it's a it's a pretty out there character it's a pretty out there property but how much pressure do you feel like staying true to what the ticket's about and keeping it as true to what you know there's been a lot of iterations you know there's the books and then there's a live action how how much pressure do you feel like keeping it true to what it is you know doing what you're doing with the new characters and keeping right. it true to the you know to the older characters and, and you know wanting to bring new characters in how much how much pressure yeah. does it you know a lot <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was a lot of pressure when I was I think that it it's been coming down but it, it started up high when I was thinking of the pilot and how to engineer that and what that was going to be and how much serious how much not serious and other things how much violence how much um, you know. I'm on the fence, frankly, about our level of language. I think that that's something that I'm not 100% sure about, but I think it, it, it does... I am sure about our level of violence, which I think works. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think Arthur's got a poncho. <laughs> so I, I like that it, he, it, it, it's useful, because there's blood everywhere. Uh, that, to me, that makes me laugh. Um, but I think that... What I really faced, it was just wanting people who love the other versions to have a chance to, to love this, and to me that was about creating a through line of warmth. Because in every version there's been some sort of unexpected warmth that you might not expect in a, in a parody that's throwing all of its stuff out the window, or in a superhero thing where a lot of times those can be kind of cold. Um, it was really, uh, I feel like we got that with, uh, with Peter and with Griffin and with, the, and with their relationship on camera and how the ticket are. Yeah, yeah, that was really interesting what Ben had to say. And again, this is just some of it. The full audio is on the podcast. The link is going to come up um, at the end of this episode and the link is going to come. The link is also down in the description bar. So go down, go check the uh, podcast out and let us know what you think about it. Um, we have Scott Spicer and Ben 
uh, ben, uh, Brandon Hines. Scott Spicer plays, as you guys know, Overkill, and Brandon Hines plays Superion. This was a really, really fun one to do. These guys are jokesters. And yeah, so check them out. Uh, check out their interview. Season, like, how far are they going to push Superion's power set? And, like, I mean, what you do with the coffee, top <laughs> know, 10 I mean, power that's... sets ever. <laughs> yeah, I hope. Um... Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't. I want to answer that question so oh, badly, <laughs> <laughs> accurately. So, you know, we know we can. I can fly. We can, we know I've got pretty, pretty good strength. The coffee thing. Um, you know, I think in the second half of the season, what I can tell you is that uh, we actually see more of the cracks in the superior facade uh, than we see. Um, you know, more, uh, more powers. But, that's not to say there aren't powers. There is still a really, really good one that I'm not gonna say anything Better about. than the coffee thing? <laughs> it's up there. I think it's okay. close. Okay. I think it's close. It's not that. <laughs> I don't think anything is better than the coffee thing. Fun, energetic interview. I loved it. I loved doing this one. And so it was really fun and really interesting. I got to ask the most important question I felt like, I, what I felt like was the most important question. Uh, to Superion and if and I just thought that was really his answer was really really interesting and yes I'm excited about it but what I have for you guys next is David Fury and Wally Fister and these guys are the executive producers of the show so hear from them what they feel about the show and you know um, streaming services and all that good stuff that's your interview coming up talked about doing this version of the show and he said no <laughs> why no <laughs> But then he came around to, okay, I could do this if it's different. Um, and he always wanted to grow it. And when he had his first conversations with David about the series, I think it sort of inspired David, like, oh, okay, this is going to be a different version of the tech. Um, and I think he never wanted to just lay back on the graphic novel and the animated show, the last version that was done for Fox, and really wanted to grow it into its, its own creature. Actually, he told me about, before he asked me to partner with him on it, he was telling me, like, oh, I'm doing the tick again on Amazon, and he told me what the take was. And I went, that's great. And I just thought that's that's the way to do it, to make it it's new, a new thing entirely. So you're just doing a silly comedy show. To have here is, you know, about streaming, you know, when will it be? And when did it end and how quickly did you watch it, right? Yeah. Or even cable or network shows that do stream and then boom, you know, you flow through it quickly when you have that option, right? There's yeah. that miss also someone for big you know, the big shows like the Eternals walking in, we have that that Monday morning I miss, part I know, of that. that. I miss, yeah, that, that. yeah, that's the part that I miss, yeah. being old. Um, I, I miss the, like, oh, you got to wait a week for the next, like, oh, I can't, did you guys see the episode last night? And everybody saw the episode last night. It doesn't work that way. Now with streaming, it's like, oh, no, I'm going to binge watch it. I'm still on episode three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And no one's a, so we thought, <laughs> wife, so initially with Amazon, we thought it was a great idea to do a gap so that by the time the back half shows up, everybody will have caught, caught up, up and start talking like, did you see the first six? Yeah, I showed up with the grave. Yeah. So, uh, but we, again, we didn't expect it to be six We months. admit we didn't know it was that long. No. <laughs> Originally it was six to eight weeks, but they, they decided to make it six months. Um, thanks, guys. Thank you. Again, this is really, really fun and really interesting. I want you, I want to thank you guys for watching these interviews, but also I want to ask you guys to check out the podcast. The link is right here right now. Check the podcast out and then, you know, drop a comment. And let us know what you thought about the interviews. And again, let us know if um, some of these questions that were asked with um, some of the things that you wanted to know. Also, let us know the next time we're going to Comic-Con. If, if there's uh, questions you want, you can email it to us. Um, earth 2 Comicast with the number 2, Comicast at gmail.com. Or, or I'll do a video to let you guys know, you know, what we're going to do and what, what, who we're going to go see backstage and whatnot. So, again, I want to thank you guys for watching. Check us out or check for more pictures from these interviews. Uh, we're going to have those posted on social media sites, um, Earth 2 Comic Cast, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I just want to thank you guys again for watching. Thank you guys for supporting. I do this for you guys. Uh, keep reading. Keep watching. And I'm